Welcome to Aztec Rewind Football Edition, presented by Aztec Shops. I'm your host, Coach Doug Deacon, one of the assistant coaches on the staff, special teams coordinator. I'm going to be pairing up with some of the players to take you back through some of the most memorable moments from the 2019 season. Joining me now to take us through his very first start as an Aztec behind center at quarterback, our very own hometown hero, Carson Baker, by way of Helix High School here in San Diego. Carson, how are you? Doing good, Coach. Thank you for having me. You got it. Looks like quarantine's been uh, treating you well. You got a little caterpillar on top the lip there or what? Yeah, keeping it going. This is uh, like two months in, so we're going to keep it strong. Love it. Well, Carson's going to be a redshirt sophomore going into this upcoming 2020 season. And before we move on, wanted to ask you, go all the way back to your senior year of high school, what went into your decision to come and play at San Diego State? Yeah, so like you said, hometown hero, hometown guy. Grew up in San Diego. And uh, my, my grandparents actually had season tickets to Aztec basketball. So I got to grow up and watch guys like Kawhi Leonard. And uh, for me, when I got the San Diego State offer, it was a no-brainer. I always wanted to be a part of the culture, a part of the program. So committed right away, and it was a great decision. Well, Carson and viewers at home, what we uh, recognized in you as a staff, uh, we would host a passing tournament, a seven-on-seven -seven for all the local high schools and even invite out-of-state competition to come in. And Helix would, of course, frequent it every year. And Carson would just show and lead the team to the championship game year after year and show when the when it came to crunch time that he wanted the ball in his hands and could effectively lead the team. And you obviously proved that during the regular season when we could go to one of your games uh, per year with you right in the backyard. And you certainly fulfilled that uh, as a fierce competitor now that you've stepped on and, and uh, really done a great job. But it's now the end of May. The semester's just ended. And normally we'd be going into summer conditioning and team seven on seven. Offensive line would be doing drill work. Along with the defensive line, we'd have meetings. But with the quarantine and everything, it's been a little bit different. What can you tell uh, the viewers at home what you and your teammates have been doing? Right. So, yeah, it's a weird time right now. Uh, you know, we're, we're used to being together all the time. And now we're on our own, being responsible for doing our own personal workouts. But Coach Hall's did a really good job of sending us runs and lifts uh, to follow every week and make sure that we're staying in shape and uh, being the best football team we can be come fall. Good. Well, since we're all getting anxious to get going again, thought it'd be a great opportunity to show the BYU game from last season. And I uh, wanted you to be able to take Aztec Nation through what it's like from your perspective behind the face mask, taking the field for your first career start. And what I've also done, uh, Carson, is I've modified the film. So uh, key drives. I've also included some defensive series or plays in there to show and highlight uh, in the game that were critical uh, to our success. You ready to go? Yes, sir, let's do it. Let's roll the film. And so rivalry renewed, if you will, BYU and San Diego State uh, first played all the way back to 1948. So it's good now that uh, since they've gone independent and we've stayed in the Mountain West to get it going again. Hadn't played since 2012. And on this opening kickoff, kickoff to Jordan Bird, he was a true sophomore. He ran a 10-3, 100-meter time. He was the state champion in New Mexico. But we miss an assignment here and only give you a 21-yard line field position. That ain't good enough, so I apologize. I'll work on that. But here you are. First time taking the field. Did you know what the first play was going to be? Yeah, I did. Coach Horton, earlier in the week, around Thursday, it's going to be one play to kind of get your nerves out. Uh, and I actually didn't know going to be under center so the first thing I'm thinking is just to fumble the ball get the snap and get the handoff well good you got the handoff take a deep breath here what do you got cooking this next play yes yeah, so we're in deep formation here so you know it's going to be a pass uh, you look at the linebackers in this situation they're actually not lined up correctly and for me, instead of trying to rush on the play, I wanted to see them line up. So I saw where that linebacker went. and uh, This gave me a window to throw to Parker on his outside shoulder. And he did a really good job of fixing out and giving me a spot to throw it. And it was a, a tight window throw, but first completion out of the way. 
and thread the needle too. Feel good. You yeah. feel a little more confident now that you're one for one. Oh yeah. Getting first completion out of the way is the big thing. And now we're going quarterback sneak and we just felt really confident about this. And uh, we just did it all year. Well, good. Coming into this week, talk to me about your senior uh, quarterback and Ryan Agnew, the winningest quarterback by winning percentage minimum of 15 starts in program history. Anything you've learned from him, uh, his game, his preparation going into this game? Oh, yeah, definitely. So, you know, with Agnew being the one and I'm two, we get a chance to, uh, you know, be together a lot. We room together in the hotels. So just watching the detail he puts in, you know, week in and week out and how serious he takes the game uh, was really big for me. And I would just like to, you know, nitpick his game. And, uh, you know, in this situation here, him not being able to play, he was really supportive of me and making sure that, you know, I didn't make the situation bigger than it was and keeping me calm throughout the game. Now, Carson, we ended up punting that first drive. I've moved ahead into a critical series to the second quarter now. We're down by three, and we pick it back up on a third and three with 115 left on the clock. Take us into this series and what's going through your mind. Let's roll the film. Right, so in this situation, it's – two-minute football, two-minute offense. So you just want to consistently get the ball down the field. In this scenario, I end up scrambling right and just giving that little hesitation on the safety right there, uh, threatening to throw down the field, frees him up, and uh, lets me get to the sticks for the first down. And get out of bounds and get the clock stops. That was great. Right. And we're just consistently trying to move the ball down the field uh, right here. They're in a drop eight, so eight guys drop, three guys rush. And um, the smart thing to do in that is get the ball down to the check down and a guy like Kate Williams who can, you know, make a play for us and turn a check down into nine yards and just consistently keep moving the ball. Same thing right here, drop eight. I uh, actually find a sit over the middle. That's Chance Bell making a really good catch. Taking a big hit for us and holding on to the football, getting the first down, stopping the clock, and letting us get set up for the next play. When you say drop eight, only rushing three here, stuck it into a tight window. Yep, and then here, here it, same thing, drop eight, ended up scrambling, uh, moving forward and take a, a walk in the college football hit right there. And uh, Dunkel picks me up, guys picking me up, but, uh, you know, definitely hurts. And that's welcome to the big leagues right there. And at this point, you just completed your 10th pass because I've cut ahead in the action. Now, you've only thrown 14 attempts and, and completed 10, and that was the seventh different Aztec receiver in Chance Bell out of Burroughs High School in Burbank, and before that, Kagan Williams out of Cedar Hills in Texas. Was that on purpose, or was it just the way that it ended up happening based on what BYU was giving you? Yeah, it's not something you think about uh, throughout the game. It's something that just kind of happens, but I think it's a testament to the amount of guys we have on our team that can catch the ball and can make plays for us. So it's a cool stat, but it's not uh, something you think about. Now, within this timeout here, anything in particular you remember was discussed going into this uh, critical third down play? Uh, yeah, we just, you know, got to get the first down. I think we had third and five here. Just uh, got to move the sticks and uh, get closer so we can take a shot at the end zone. Well, let's roll the film. So as you said, third and five, no timeouts, and we're on the BYU 32-yard line. Right, just get man coverage here. Uh, Jesse does a good job of getting to the sticks and creating separation. I give him a little bit of time to work his route, and we end up getting the first down and uh, getting up to the ball here. And we're going to go ahead and spike to stop the clock and uh, figure out what our next uh, strategic move is going to be. Now I'm on the headset with Coach Long. Coach Hort is going to get on the headset and ask Coach what he'd like to do here. And at first he wanted to – Coach, you want to center the ball and us spike it for a field goal? And he goes, oh, no, Coach, let's go take a shot. Just want to make sure you tell the offense here, if we get tackled in bounds, make sure we spike the ball. So from here, Carson, take us through this play here. Right, so this was our, uh, our take a shot play all week. We repped it all week. And uh, my read here is going to be that free high safety that's in the middle of the field. 
and we get the perfect look, the look that we've been repping all week. Uh, so my eyes are going to go right to that safety. If he doesn't commit over Bellinger, I'm going to put it on him in that gap right over the linebackers. And it ended up being a really big play for us in the touchdown. First collegiate touchdown pass. Did it live up to everything you thought it would be? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, this was probably the first time in the game that I heard the crowd, just because you're so focused on everything that's going on. And I heard the crowd, and it was really loud, and it created so much excitement. And for me, something I'll always remember will be, you know, coming off the field and seeing the defensive guys and my other offensive teammates that are, you know, happy for me, uh, celebrating with me, and just really excited. It was a great feeling. It was a lot of fun. All your teammates were so fired up for you on the sideline. I remember that vividly. Now we're going to get back to the replay here. Take the viewers through what you're looking through one more time. All right, so you look at that one high safety that's over in the middle of the field, and uh, it's going to get drawn up here. Bellinger's actually going to come across to that left hash and on a bender route, and Elijah Cody in the slot is going to be running the same type of route. So if that safety commits over Bellinger, um, I'm going to go to Elijah on the number two, but I felt that that safety – uh, stayed in the middle a little too long, and I thought I could put it in. And when the ball was in there, he actually made a really good play on the ball, and it turned into a kind of a catch-hit situation. But with the size of Bellinger and how fast he is, it was just a, a touchdown for us. Yeah, no kidding. Not bad throwing to a 6-6 target, huh? Yeah, it makes my job really easy. And that was Daniel Bellinger. He'll be a true junior this 2020 season out of Palo Verde High School in Nevada. There's a shot of Coach Horton there. Talk to me about your relationship with Coach Horton. Yeah, Coach Horton was really instrumental in, you know, the whole recruiting process for me. He actually showed up to my state championship game in Sacramento. We had a guy, Rashad Scott, on our team was also committed to San Diego State. So that was awesome to get to talk to him after the game and just had a really good relationship with him as offensive coordinator. And he's been a really good guy and really a guy that's helped me a lot. Well, there you are. It was huge for the team to take the lead going into half. Uh, let's take a TV timeout ourselves here. Brought to you by Aztec Shops. Would you be interested when we get back on to take us through the wild second half? Yeah, let's get to it. All right, great. Welcome back to the second half of Aztec Rewind Football Edition, presented by Aztec Shops. Here with none other than quarterback of the Aztecs, Carson Baker. Uh, we moved ahead in the action here in the second half to a defensive play that was critical to the outcome, at least the momentum at the time of the game. After half, we had kicked off to BYU that resulted in a punt. And the first drive back, Carson, you and that Aztec offense got us all the way down to the 27-yard line. And Matt Ariza connects on a 44-yard field goal for the take us up 10 to 3 in the game. And we'll pick it up late in the third here. BYU's driving across the 50, and it becomes second and one. And we'll roll the film here. Baker, BYU goes with the old flea flicker. We're in straight man-to-man -man coverage. The receiver at the bottom of the screen is going to pretend like he's going to go inside the block and then run a takeoff. He's wide open. But at the top of the screen, you're going to see Tariq Thompson blitz off the edge and prevent a for sure wide open touchdown. Another hometown hero out of St. Augustine High School, Tariq, with a huge sack strip. You go against the defense every day in practice, Carson. What's it like having him on your side on game day? Yeah, so it's just a great feeling having, uh, in my eyes, the best defense in the country alongside you uh, on the Saturdays. And, uh, you know, going against them in practice, it's a really confusing defense, a lot of moving parts, a lot of guys that are flying around. So it's tough for any offense to go against. We'll take a look. Not a bad first half stat line. We end up punting that possession. BYU punts the ball right back to us. You look up to the scoreboard here on this drive. You're up seven, 10 minutes left in the fourth. Take us through it. Right. So the big goals of this drive are to uh, chew some clock and get down the field to make it a two possession game. Uh, so the first play, we're just running the ball 
trying to take some more clock. Uh, we're big on establishing the run and owning the line of scrimmage. So that's what we're trying to do. And that's just going to set up right here. We get a, a Jesse Matthews at the bottom of the screen. And he's running a double move, so almost like a hitch and go. And uh, this is a play that Coach Coop talked about all week, and especially in this game with man coverage, we felt like that would be really effective. So for me, I'm just keeping my eyes right on that one high safety, making sure that he's not running to either side. And I give Jesse a ball that was on his back shoulder. If I actually kept it on his front shoulder, he could have ran through it and got a, uh, more yards for us. But uh, nevertheless, got us down the field, and he makes a really big play. And here we go again, establishing the run. Uh, it's Kagan Williams taking more clock and setting up another pass play for us. And now we get uh, we get man coverage and we get press man on the outside. And that safety actually comes down into the box. So there's no one over the top, and I don't have to look off anyone. I know I'm going to the fade to Jesse at the top of the screen. And for me, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage, just looking for a little bit of separation and trying to put a ball that will drop right on him. And uh, he does a good job of getting open and making another really big-time catch for us to get us in the red zone. Not bad of a throw for a redshirt freshman, only where he can get it. Jesse, another San Diego guy out of El Cajon Christian High School. Now we ran the ball in first and second down. I moved us up here to third and goal. Take us through this play here, Carson. Right, so uh, with our special teams unit, when we get across the 30, we know that we're going to get points. So for me, this is a pass play that's either – Touchdown, I absolutely love it, or I'm not forcing anything. So right here, I get in my drop, and I just don't love it. End up scrambling, right? And I uh, would love to get down here, but I step out of bounds and just not force anything in the red zone. I remember vividly on the headset, uh, affirming us as a coaching staff, the game wasn't too big or too fast in your very first collegiate start. Uh, instead of forcing a throw, potential turnover, or throwing it out of bounds and the clock stops because the clock isn't under two minutes here in the fourth, we would have liked you to slide. However, by running out of bounds, the clock does start when the ball's marked ready for play. So we got to chew off another 25, 28 seconds uh, by you making that decision. And then you got your other hometown hero in Rancho Bernardo High School, Matt Ariza, able to split the uprights. He's the single season record holder in San Diego State history, beating John Barron for 22 made in a season. And here you are on the sideline. Anything you're discussing with the offense at this point? Yeah, so all the pressure right here is on the BYU offense. So uh, as an offense, we're just talking about, you know, getting the ball back. You want the ball late in the game to run that clock out and get the win. Well, good. Third and 10, throw it out of bounds here. I'm going to take the viewer through this fourth and 10. They're down two scores, so we know they're going to go for it. We're going to watch another hometown hero in Cam Thomas, jersey number 65. He's going to be the nose guard here on a pass rush stunt, able to affect the quarterback's throw here. And on the back end, we're going to be in man coverage here. And because he affects the throw, none other than Tariq Thompson again with his second takeaway, the 22nd by the Aztec defense at this point in the season, and a huge play, the third takeaway of the game by the defense with Dwayne Johnson having the other interception earlier on in the game. Baker, take the viewers through what uh, Tariq is in the locker room and, and who he means to the team. Yeah, so Tariq's just one of the, you know, the biggest leaders on our defense. And he's probably, you know, one of the most respected guys on the team. And uh, throughout this whole game, he's making big plays for us and uh, really stepping up on senior night and, uh, you know, doing a really great job. Now, B, we ended up chewing some more time on the clock. We punt the ball. BYU gets the ball back, drives it down. One score, to make it a one-score game, they elect to kick a field goal but miss. And no one's more excited than me. I had hands team ready to go. And as a result, you get to call the best play in the playbook, victory formation, take a knee. Not bad for a first start, first career win. How'd that feel? Yeah, it's just a big relief. Uh, you know, get the win on senior night for the seniors that have done so much for the program and been, you know, tremendous leaders uh, for all of us. And that was our ninth win of the season. A big goal was 
getting the 10 wins and we end up doing that in our next bowl game and uh, just you know so much work put in that week so much uh, film study and it was really nice to come out of there and get a win well with the graduation of ryan agnew an addition of another hometown guy mount carmel high school lucas johnson with already the quarterbacks in the room gonna be some quarterback competition what are you doing this off season to make sure you solidify yourself as the starter yeah, just, you know, waking up every day and, uh, you know, asking myself, how can I get better today? Whether it be working out, running, throwing, uh, you know, sticking to Coach Hall's workouts. And uh, like you said, we have a great group of guys, a great QB room, a lot of competition, a lot of support. So we're all really excited to get going. Well, we can't wait to get going again. And obviously, I look forward to seeing you in person, Carson, and, and not having to do Zoom meetings with you. And I know Aztec Nation is itching for some football. Uh, we want to again thank Aztec Shops for presenting Aztec Rewind here. A little rivalry renewed with BYU. Uh, that was the 37th meeting and hadn't played them since 2012. But I know Aztec Nation is going to look forward. We go to Provo late in the year. This year uh, will be another one to uh, circle on the calendar. It's, it's always a great game to play versus BYU. Again, Carson, thanks a million for getting on with us. Go Aztecs. Yeah, thank you for watching.